In this video, we're going to be replacing the rear strut on this 2005 Honda Element. We're going to remove the rear wheel. It's going to be a 19 millimeter. Go ahead and take off the lug nuts now. So now we're inside the rear of the vehicle and you'll notice on both sides you're going to have these little covers. These are going to be access covers to your rear shocks or in this case your rear struts. These little tabs at the bottom or little openings at the bottom here. We're going to use a pick tool to get in there and just pull that cover open. It's going to be held in by these little clips here. We can set this aside. So now down inside here you're going to have two mounting bolts holding in your strut on the top side. They're going to be 14 millimeters, so we're going to use an impact on a swivel to get down in there. There's one. There's two. So now underneath the vehicle, we have our strut, which we're going to try and remove, to, but to do that, we're going to take it out this way, we need to remove our EVAP fuel canister. So we're going to start by removing the canister, we're going to remove the canister cover here, which is a couple of clips, there's two in front, two in back, there's a lot of dirt and grime behind it, so we'll clean that out, which will allow us to push these center tabs in and pull this down. There we go. So there's going to be two more on the back side. So now around the back side of the canister, two more clips. And this one looks like it's all the way out. We just need to work on this one here. Pull straight down. Now, there was and there should be one more push clip in this position here, all the way up here, facing the front of the vehicle. So on our EVAP canister here, we're going to need to remove all of these hoses and all of these plugs. We're going to start with this large hose here. I'm just going to use a pair of panel tools to see if I can wiggle that hose back at all. Nope, all right, there we go. All right. Now the hoses and things that have a little length to them, we're going to tuck them up and over the rear end just to get them out of our way. Next, we're going to go for this quick disconnect line here. Now, these panel tools are great for these quick disconnects. You can reach both sides at once. There we are. And our lock is still there, which is good. We can now move this out of the way. We'll move on to our connections here, our electrical connections. Push down the tab on the top and pull the plug backwards. So with this last plug here, we're going to push in that tab, use our pick tool, and just pry that plug backwards. There we go. couple more connections. We have a hose straight up here. Right, just push our hose up and off and set it aside. Now straight up here we're going to find a 10 millimeter bolt. It's going to be right next to another one. And this one right here is going to be holding in your canister. So we'll go ahead and back out that bolt. So now on the outside of this fuel canister box, we have a bracket. 
If you can find your strut or your spring, it's gonna be behind there. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt on the rear and then another 10 millimeter bolt forward on the side. So we'll take both of those out now. So our bolt here broke. We'll have to do something about that when we reinstall. So on this bolt here, we went ahead and added some heat, but because we're in the fuel area, we used a, an option that doesn't put out an open flame. And there's our canister and our bolt. What we can do here is just lower our canister without fully taking it out because we still have a harness attached to the back here. That's actually what's still holding it in place. So we don't need to remove the canister. We just need to gain a little bit more room to remove our shock or our strut. So with this loose, that's good enough for now. As long as it's not gonna fall, we can go ahead and move on to the bottom bolt of our strut. Now down to the bottom of our strut, we have one bolt holding it in place. Remember, we've loosened up the two or removed the top two bolts, so this is gonna be it. Once we remove this, we'll be able to remove our strut straight out the back. The nut in the back is gonna be a 22 millimeter as well as the bolt. So we have a 22 millimeter wrench, 22 millimeter socket on an impact. You can remove that bolt. So now we have our, our bolt almost all the way through here. We're just gonna have to get this bolt all the way out and then we can remove our strut. Sometimes you can continue to back this bolt out and it will thread itself out. So do a pair of angle needle nose, just keep tapping it out. We can tell that our strut is putting a lot of downward pressure because the bolt is now angled downward. So we'll just try and rearrange that strut a little bit we can get that bolt out. We're gonna use a pry bar and just wiggle the bottom of that strut as we back out the bolt. There's your bolt. So now we have the bottom bolt of our strut free, which means our strut is actually loose what we're gonna do is come in from the bottom here and just try and pry the bottom of this out. Now just be prepared for it to drop out. We can just grab it, give it a little wiggle and pull it right out. And this is why you needed to move your fuel vapor canister. And there's your strut. So now with our strut, we're gonna feed it up into the top of the vehicle. We're gonna try and align our two bolts. Okay, once we have those, then we're gonna concentrate on the bottom here. We're gonna try and get it into position and just put a pry bar in there to hold it. So while holding the strut up, we're gonna use a rubber mallet and hit our lower mount into this position here. Now because that was so tough to get into place, it's pretty much holding itself, but you wanna be careful not to let go. 
once we get them aligned enough that we can put something through just to hold that position for us. And we're gonna go inside the vehicle and loosely tighten down our top two nuts. So now inside the vehicle, we can take our two nuts and we're just gonna thread them on by hand to start and then we'll just snug them up. We'll be retightening and torquing all these under load. And these new nuts that come with your strut are gonna be 15 millimeter. And they are locking nuts. Now we'll go underneath and work on the bottom mount. So now if you're working by yourself and you're having trouble getting your hole to line up on the bottom of your strut, what you can do is come over here to your link. We're gonna undo the top bolt and remove our top link. It'll give you more play in the rear suspension. Our link is gonna be a 15 millimeter and we're gonna try and spin it loose while keeping an eye on the inside flange. If the inside flange spins, then we'll need to put a wrench inside there to hold it. Yep, now the inside's spinning. So we'll go ahead and put a wrench back here. So the inside flange, is gonna be an 18 millimeter. I'm gonna wrench on that. We'll go ahead and loosen the nut here. Now there's a nut and a washer. We'll take them both off. And while we're here, we're gonna push our link through the rear sway bar. Now this hopefully gives us enough room to pull our rear suspension down slightly. And now we'll come back again with the same pry bar and see if we have a little bit of an easier time lining up those holes. Now to finish this bolt off coming all the way through, we're gonna pry up this side because it's now at a down angle, we need to go level. So we're gonna pry up this side just a little bit. And give it a tap with our hammer. What you don't wanna do is send it all the way through because now you can't put your nut on that bolt. So in our case, it went all the way through. We're just gonna pry it up a little bit to level out that hole and send that bolt back just enough to put the nut on. And once that nut's on, we can go ahead and tighten it down and it'll come together. We can take our 22 millimeter wrench and our 22 millimeter socket and snug these up. Before we tighten them down, we're gonna to wanna to put our rear suspension here on this side under load, and we'll come back and torque everything down, as well as our link. We'll go ahead and snug this up. Now the goal here isn't to tighten it all the way down. We want to just take the play out and snug it up, and we'll actually tighten it down under load. So I'm just gonna back this off a little. So now we're going to put our link back in 
And you can see our rear suspension's lowered a little bit to match up with our, our new strut. So we'll just pull that rear sway bar down to meet it. Put our washer and our nut back on. And our 18 millimeter on the back. Our 15 millimeter on front. We'll just snug these up. Under load, we'll tighten them down to the torque spec. So now we can do is put a pole jack underneath our rear suspension. We're going to raise this side suspension to mimic load of the vehicle. And then we'll come back and torque everything to spec. So now your bottom strut bolt here is going to be torqued down to 69 foot-pounds. Again, we're going to back it up with a 22 wrench. So now with our rear suspension under load, we'll tighten down our link to 29 foot-pounds. Our into top nuts here are going to get torqued down to 54 foot-pounds. Once you're done torquing your two bolts on top here, we can put our cover on. It's going to be pressed into place. So now that you have your top two bolts torqued down under load, we can go ahead and take the pole jack off of our suspension. And if you're working at home on the ground, this would be when you would remove your floor jack. We can remove this, get it out of the way, and move on. So now we can remount our fuel vapor canister. We're going to start over here with the one bolt that broke on us earlier. And we'll move across to the other one here. And our last bolt is going to be straight up here by your hose connection. So right here, we're going to make sure that our lock is in position and it's still locked on that little groove. We're going to take our, our quick disconnect line. We're going to make sure on the inside of that there's no debris or anything in this area here. We'll make a good clean connection. We're going to line up these locking tabs with this cutout window. We're going to push straight down to lock it in. Give it a little tug up. Make sure it's locked. And then from there we can move on to our hose. And there is no hose clamp on this. It's just going to be push until it's all the way seated to the back. All right, now between the canister and the tank there's one more electrical connection. We'll plug that in. So 
So now the last step to our canister here is put our cover on. You're going to have four clips to push into on our canister. We're going to align two on this side, the front side. Push to click. We'll come around the other side and line those up. So our rear two clips, line them up and push in. So if you follow the inside of your canister, cover all the way up, there's going to be one push clip up in the top that's going to hold in place. So when I do a wheel, I like to put on top and bottom lug nut, rock back and forth, continue to tighten them down by hand. This just helps you get it nice and flat against the rotor. Give it a look, looks good. Snug these up in a crisscross pattern. And then we'll lower it down, put the tire on the ground, and torque them down. So now that we've lowered the vehicle down, our tire's on the ground, we're going to go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 79 foot pounds. We're going to do it in a crisscross pattern. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.